Now I'll just quickly walk you through my setup and then I'll give you a sample of what I can do with my keynotes, how I've transitioned it from in-person to, to virtual. So let me take you a bit of a walkthrough. We have the main camera that I'll be speaking to you and addressing you from. We've got a, another camera. I think it's important to change camera angles to enhance engagement. Otherwise, it's a little bit 2D, it's a little bit flat. The third camera angle I have here, which is for us to be able to get a bit more intimate and, and, and get deep into the content. So I'll, I'll use this as in the example of my keynote as well, so you can have a bit of a sample. And then on top of this, I think it's important as well, because it's virtual, we've got to engage with the people that are on the call. That's the difference. Uh, the more engaged we are with the audience members, the more engaged they will be. So I've set up another camera angle over here for us to be able to get a bit more intimate and personal where I'm not standing and it's a bit weird. I'm sitting like all of you are. And then we can engage in Q&A over here. So that's just kind of the lay of the land, so you know. And for those of you who are technically inclined as well, I've also got my slides embedded in my switcher here. So we can also still use our slides and I can throw to my slides and we can do all the fancy stuff there with the slides. So what we'll do now is we'll start with a keynote module of mine, which is titled Influence. So if I bring you to this, it's about influence. But when I do my keynotes, and, and I want you to experience this virtually now, so I'll switch over to virtual. What I want to talk to you all about now is influence. But before we actually can talk about influence, I, I need to demonstrate influence so you all can experience it. So again, at this point, I will need a volunteer as well. So I think at this point, I'm gonna go with someone who just joined us. I'm gonna go with Della Starr. So Della, do you mind being a volunteer for this? You just have to turn on your microphone. Yes, no, I'm ready to help you. And it's Dia, nice to meet you then. Oh, Dia, sorry. So That's Dia, okay. lovely to meet you, Dia. So Dia, what we're gonna do is, this is about influence, okay? So I just, I just want you to know it's about influence. So your job is try not to let me influence you. Now, to play the game of influence, we need to actually perform a piece of magic that is, that is one of the most dangerous pieces of magic in the world. And I'm going to share with you what that trick is after you watch this video. Something that will make you do that is the infamous spike trick. We're gonna raise the stakes a little bit. This time we're gonna use the nail. See the point right there. Someone will lift their hand. This modern magic trick increases the chance of injury and pain. An exponent of the spike trick is street magician Chris Korn, who places a metal spike under polystyrene cups and tries to avoid slamming his palm onto the spike even after they're moved around. Chris didn't understand how dangerous it was. While rehearsing, I mix up the cups and I see where the spike is. Mm -hmm. All right, and look, just so you know, there's no magnets, anything in my hands. I see him notice where the spike is because of how the trick works. Then he raises his hand real high and slams it down on exactly the cup with the spike underneath it. Just gonna wave this. It is terrible to watch. I took no pleasure in that. I mean, I watched it seven times, but I took no pleasure in it because it is... Oh, God! One! Two! Three! <laughs> and that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> so, look, dear, my, my kind of well-being is in your hands. Uh, if you look over here, we've got three bags. And in two of these bags, these two here, uh, it's just a block of wood. But over here, we have a block of wood and also a nail, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I'll take this block of wood and put it in this bag, the one with the nail. But you see, right now, the, the situation isn't very dangerous or there's no influencing taking place because you know where the nail is. I know where it is. Everyone on this call knows where it is. So I'm gonna create a situation where none of you know where it is. So I'm gonna take the bags, and I'm going to just turn around quickly and uh, I'm just going to switch them a little bit like so. And what happens is just by doing that simple motion, now all of you don't know where it is, especially you, dear. You don't know where it is. Now, the idea is I still know where it is. And my job as a magician, when magicians perform this trick, is because I know where it is, I have to seemingly make you choose a bag that seems like a free choice, but it's not. But it's not. 
It's about influencing now. I have to influence you to pick the bags that don't have the nail, obviously. And then hopefully the one that's left remaining after that is the one with the nail. So whatever you choose will be final. I uh, just wanted to state that. So dear, this is bag number one. Mm -hmm. This is bag number two. And this is bag number three. Okay. Which bag? And just let me, let me check as well. So you know that I know. And then I'm going to... Good. So again, not to influence you, but would you like bag one, two, or three? It's a complete three choice. What would you like? Then you're stressing me completely out here. <laughs> um, let's just go. I don't know. I, I don't want you to hurt yourself. I'm going with two. We're going to go with two. Two. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, so, so two. And... No. <laughs> Good. Perfect. So, and, and as I'll mention as well, I will not half-ass this. I will, I will go full. I'll give it both cheeks, if you would. So, <laughs> here we go. Now there are two. Now, dear, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The chances of getting this wrong now have been elevated. And just in case, I, I want you to know, uh, you know, if you do feel squirmish, then, then watch this video just a little bit closer. This is what could happen. Neither me nor the uh, audience knows where the knife is. And then I make my psychic selection, and if all goes well... Oh! Oh! Ta-da! <laughs> the pressure is on. I would like you to make a choice at this point. Would you like bag number one or two? Let's go with two. As in this one or, or, or this one, sorry, two over here, right? Yeah. Okay, this is a bit awkward. This uh, hasn't really happened before, but God, you've said it, so you just... like beating. <laughs> Good, fantastic. Let's give her a silent round of applause on there so people can see you clapping. Because this last one, yeah, what's interesting is the last one is the one with the nail. Perfect. So thank you for being such a wonderful volunteer. I appreciate you. You see, the, the reason why I did this is to, to, to share with you that influence is something that is very real. You, you see this as something that is potentially very dangerous, but it's not because as a magician, we have to learn how to influence our audience members. And another quick example that you all can play along with, and if you've played this game before, just play along anyway. But I want you all to experience what, what we just had someone experience just here just now. I want you all to hold out your right hands. Let's, let's play with this. Hold out your right hands, just like what Dia did before. And then turn your right hand upside down. And then point all your fingers together. Bend your arm 90 degrees. And this next bit, I want all of you to do as quickly as you can, but please don't hurt yourself. Quickly as you can, take your fingertips. Everyone go to your cheek. And then have a look at everyone and say, that's not your cheek, that's your chin. Right, so this... this this is a game of influence. It's a game of influence. And I, and I do this to prove one point. One of my early mentors, his name is David Griggs, shared this with me. And, and when he shared this with me, it, it, it profoundly changed my life. And this is relevant in our times now more than ever. And he said a very simple line. He said, then you can see the effects of influence. This is why this next statement is true. You are the direct reflection of the top five people you spend time with. You're the direct reflection of the top five people you spend time with. That's who you are. But you see, that, that lesson that he shared, it's relevant in assessing who we are in the present. It's not as useful when we're looking into the future. So when we're thinking about it with a future perspective, what it means is you can control who you become in the future by deciding who you spend time with today. And I'd, I'd love to share with you, one, one of the biggest reasons I'm even a speaker is because of this lesson. I've, I've wanted to be a speaker now for easily 10 years. I, I, I started to, to, to really love this career path in 2010. And I remember I asked David, and I said, David, what do I do? And David goes, Vin, look, it's very simple. If you want to be a speaker, bring a speaker into your top five. So then I, I started to Google, and the stalking began. And I found a gentleman. His name is Matthew Mihilovich. If you look here, Matthew is a, an amazing entrepreneur. He's an amazing speaker in Australia. And I flew to Sydney to watch him speak. And the moment I saw him speak, I was like, yes, I need to get this man's attention. So I, so I, sent, him, I sent him an email every single eight days, just so that every week you'll get the email on a different day. You gotta, you gotta keep things really fresh. 
And what happened next was about six months of sending him emails, he then blocked me. And I just thought an entrepreneur would reward persistence, but he didn't. So what I did next was I kind of went a little bit crazy and it was about 2000, early 2014, I kind of went a bit crazy and I, I, purchased, I purchased a thousand of his books. And uh, my wife was pissed. Oh yeah. But then I got his attention because I took a photo of this and I wrote a handwritten letter because I could no longer email at him. And then I sent it to him in the, in the mail. And about a week later, he called me. And when he called me, the first words he said to me were, he, he, he called me and he, and he goes, Vin, you cheeky bastard. Next week, I'll give you an hour of my time. Long story short, Matthew and I become, became great friends. And the reason I'm even here is because of Matthew. Matthew actually took me to Poland, his home country, for four weeks to teach me how to build my speaking career here in the United States of America. You see, this is, uh, this is Matthew and I here. He completely changed my world. And the reason I'm sharing this with all of you, especially in this kind of context right now, is your top five is more relevant than ever. You know, as, as a speaker, I can tell you now that I'm spending my time with speakers who are pushing themselves to innovate in this space, in the speaking space, to go virtually, to create something that our managers and our agents can actually put forward to our clients. And if I spent time with another group of speakers who just, again, don't believe in virtual and are just going to wait till things get back to normal, that will dictate the way I act. It's going to dictate the way I act. And, and the reason I'm sharing all of this is I think I want to connect it to something broader. And what I want to connect it to is that we all know that in common wisdom, it's our beliefs that dictate our actions. So we know that our beliefs dictate our actions. We know that our beliefs dictate our actions, but what we have to ask ourselves during this time is, well, where do our beliefs come from? Where do our beliefs come from? And what people don't realize is that our beliefs that we have about what's possible in our industry, our beliefs about what we, we think is possible for ourselves, our beliefs, they come from our top five. The top five people right now in your circle, whatever they believe is possible, you believe is possible. Whatever they believe isn't possible, you believe is impossible. So to me, I think, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, it's so important that you spend time with the right top five because they're going to dictate your beliefs, which will dictate your actions. I would not have this entire setup if it wasn't for my top five right now. You're the direct reflection of the top five people you spend time with. You can choose who you become in the future by deciding who you spend time with right now choose wisely. And Karen, I do think that these are so helpful because Derek, I, what you're saying, I'm getting some of that too, going, how are they interactive? What do they do? And so when we get a chance as, uh, you know, the meeting planners are working with the meeting planners to experience you, that is really helpful for us because then I can better share kind of what this feels like. Um, and I agree with you, Derek, it's so hard for people to be engaged, but when we can really talk to them about that, I mean, you better believe if you're smacking your hand over sacks and nails, I'm not letting my dog disturb me. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that true feeling of experience, I mean, you have me, you know, mentally engaged and my emotions engaged too. So I know that's hard to do for a full hour, but uh, this type of interactivity is very helpful. And, and Derek, I know once we experience these things, we can better share that with our clients. So great job mm -hmm. and thanks for letting us hop on today. Yeah. No, no yeah. worries. Yeah. Thank you.